Hello again. Here we are with chapter four of Esther. In the first chapter, we learned about the fact that Queen Vashti was no longer queen, which opened up the opportunity in chapter two for Esther to become queen of Persia, which happened. And then in chapter three, we talked about that there was a bad guy named Haman who decided that he, because he hated Mordecai, Esther's cousin, that he was going to destroy all the Jews. Now, nobody at this point besides Esther and Mordecai, know that Queen Esther is actually Jewish herself. But that takes into the story today, because what happened was, once Mordecai, Mordecai found out that there was this edict that Haman was going to destroy all of the Jews, which is what we learned about in chapter 3, that Mordecai said, I don't know what to do. And so he did what was traditional at that time if you were really upset about something. And you would wear what was called sackcloth. It's like burlap material. And you put on this, instead of wearing regular clothes, you'd put on this um, this really hard, rough material. And you'd put it on and that you would sit in ashes. You would actually put ashes on yourself as a way to show that you were humble and that basically we're you're nothing compared to what God's plan is, but you are just sorry and upset and like, like life is bad basically and so when um Mordecai was doing that Esther heard about it and so she sent him clothes and going oh here no put on some clothes you need to do that and he said I can't we are in such mourning and not only me but all of the Jewish people who have heard about this because if we don't stop this we'll all be killed and so she, he wrote down what had happened and, to, and gave it in some information and sent it back up into the palace so that Esther could know what was happening. And she was like, oh, no, what, what can I do? And he said, you must go before the king and ask him. And she said, there's a problem with that, is that there is one law of the, Mer the Medes and the Persians that has been there forever. And it's that if so you go before the king and he doesn't want to see you, if he hasn't called for you, you, in other words, if you bother the king and he hasn't asked for you to come see him, that you'll be killed. And the king hasn't asked to talk to me in over a month. And I, I, I'm afraid that if I go before him that he won't want to see me and that I will be killed. And what Mordecai said was, when her words were reported back, he said, Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, and you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. And I always love that phrase because, again, who knows but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. How do you know that you weren't chosen queen just because of this situation? Because God knows everything and knows all that will happen and all that has happened and everything that's in our hearts and our minds. Sometimes we don't know what the plan is. But as we've said before, God always has a plan. And so what the Esther said, it's like, okay, I know that. I know that God is in charge. So she said, go gather together all the Jewish people that are in Susa, which is the town we're in, and have them fast and pray for me. In other words, have them go to God and pray for me because I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm willing to put my life on the line to save everybody. So for three days, have everybody be praying and thinking about me so hopefully I won't perish and I can cause a way to be saved. So we're going to leave our story right there with the fact that she has said, I will be obedient even if it means I'm putting my life on the line. Okay, now to keep going on with the story... Um, I gave you another puppet. We've done King, um, we've done the King, and we've done Esther, and we've done the bad guy Haman. And now we're to the point where we're to Mordecai. So with Mordecai, I gave you this material that looks sort of more, um, more common, and I gave you something to hat, and I gave you some stuff for mustache and some hair and some stuff to hang on to. And then for your snack today. I gave you some fruit leather because one of the things was when you were wearing the sackcloth and ashes that you would actually like tear your clothes. So I thought you could pretend that you were tearing the pieces of material to let, to let, it was an outward way to let everybody know that you were very upset, that you were very sad and that you need God's help. And so we can pretend, but we know that God is always there. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And we'll come back next week to find the next situation of what happens with Esther.